Be prepared for it to happen this year. Have enough gold and silver it, wherever you need it to survive the immediate aftermath of a dollar collapse. It could happen at any time. It could definitely happen this year. I focus on the, the monetary philosophical aspect of these markets. I mean, I understand investment demand, I understand industrial demand, but monetary demand is a completely different thing, which we haven't seen yet. I bifurcate between investment demand and monetary demand because investment demand is what silver stackers do. It's like we stack silver. Why? Because we know that something big is going to happen. And whether we realize it or not, what that big thing is, is that an explosion of actual monetary demand. And what is monetary demand versus investment demand? Investment demand is when you when you stack silver in anticipation of monetary demand because you expect the monetary system to break down. And monetary demand is different from industrial demand because everyone demands a money. Everyone needs money for something. Otherwise, there is no division of labor. So that's a much more fundamental thing. When we look at the futures markets of silver price, whether it's on the LBMA or the COMEX or whatever the contract is, what's the price of what we're looking at? We're looking at the price of industrial demand and some investment demand, but we're not looking at the price of monetary monetary demand because monetary demand is when everybody wants it to exchange against other goods. Uh, and when that happens, that's when that's when gold to silver falls to like 15 to one, as it does in every monetary panic in history. That's what always happens. Why? Because most people can't afford gold. So they go to silver, which is already starting to happen, but it has a lot more more to fall. It fell to 15 to one in 1918. It fell to 15 to one in 1980. It's going to fall to 15 to one again. And that's when we are in a full blown monetary crisis. What I keep saying, everyone sees prices going up everywhere in the world. It's not a goods problem. It's a money problem. It's a money problem because we see basic necessities going up faster than any other prices. So everyone's focused on, you know, the broad inflation numbers. They don't matter. They do not matter because in any hyperinflationary economy, you have basic necessities going up really, really fast and luxury items either not going up at all or going up much slower than basic necessities. So in this kind of environment, we're seeing like the, the developings of a financial crisis already coming into fruition. And we, we're seeing like, what is it? The tide comes in and you realize who's naked. So the tide's starting to come in and the people on the edges are, you know, they're already naked, whether it's um, uh, the UK pension plans or FTX, you know, some kind of crypto exchange. I mean, these things are going to start happening week in, week out now and faster and faster. And eventually the, the central banks are going to have to reverse. And when they reverse in the environment of inflation, whether it's 8%, 7%, 6%, 5%, they're going to reverse. And then everyone's going to attack the precious metals because that's what humans do. That's what's going to happen. Exactly when the central banks break and start uh, printing again, I don't know, but they're going to because there's going to be humongous pressure to do so. So when that happens, I think silver gets drained from all the, the centralized stockpiles, COMEX, LBMA, um, whatever silver fund happens to be holding silver unallocated in the Perth Mint or Switzerland or whatever. It's all the same stuff. It's just different piles. They're all going to be attacked at the same time. And you can use any of them as a proxy for any of the other ones. So it's, it's the same game over and over again. When they run out, they run out and we win because we're stacking and we're not selling. Um, well, we saw it once in July of 2020 when um, I think the, the number of deliveries was higher than the amount of registered silver available. And so I think JP Morgan rushed like it was like 45 million ounces from its eligible pile into the registered. I don't know exactly why they did that, because I think deliveries going into the comics, not out at that, that time, but it was um, at least on net. So it was confusing what was happening, but at least we see the mechanism of what would happen if registered supplies go to zero. You'd see some bank or other with a whole bunch of, re of eligible supplies, put them into registered category because it's happened before. Um, but again, the rule changes in the comics in 1980, they did them because they could. The situation there was um, we were already basically back on a gold and silver standard in 1980 at least in terms of the Fed's balance sheet, because the valuation of gold at the time was enough to back all of the Fed's liabilities on its balance sheet by over 100%. That is the definition of a gold standard. And the gold silver ratio is about 15 to one, which is the general gold silver standard that we've had for hundreds of years before that. So 1980 brought us back on a gold and silver standard. So since we were already there, the COMEX had the ability to mess around with the rules. But if they do that in this environment where the Fed has absolutely no ability to raise interest rates anywhere near 20%, forget it, it's impossible. If they change the rules in this environment, then all the demand would just flood into the physical markets and everyone would just ignore the comics and who cares what they say? It doesn't matter. They won't have the power because instead of dollars trading for paper silver on a futures exchange, you just have that futures exchange ignored completely and physical silver would be exchanged for goods on some kind of decentralized panic, you know, the segmented market 
where people would be trading physical coins or some kind of reliable backing of a certificate for them for actual goods and services, which would be the end game that we're all looking at, where gold and silver become money again, literally. We've never seen in the history of the world a currency backed by a basket of commodities. That's like a, it's a nice, if people try to spin these uh, intellectual um, theories on money that we've never seen before, I don't think are possible. Look, gold and silver are money. Baskets of commodities are not money. Every time that some country comes up with a, some kind of scheme to use, whether it's a real estate or tobacco or whatever as money, it doesn't last long. Gold and silver are money, and that's it. And as for the formation of BRICS into some kind of a new currency, it would have to be gold and silver backed in order to supplant the dollar, um, which is what, what they're going to have to do. But if they do that, they're going to have to become fiscally responsible. You know, Russia has the ability to do that. Brazil and, uh, you know, India, I don't see any fiscal responsibility in those countries so much. Uh, maybe they can change. I don't see a changing of the guard by BRICS countries uh, uniting and becoming responsible and changing the world. I see the market going one way and then BRICS following the market by inertia and force and then taking credit for it. So the public is going to lead the market. Public in the streets, trying to buy food in whatever city they are in the world. When it comes down to it, they're backed by the dollar right now. So when that falls, they're going to have to go to gold and silver. And then the BRICS will say, okay, we're going to gold and silver because that's where the market's going and they have no choice. They're not going to create a market. They're going to follow the public.